Okay, morning or afternoon. Hi guys. I've decided to do a few lessons with you because I miss teaching and I need to get back into the groove. So I was thinking of going through all our Fainbos lessons with you so your mom can go relax and or cook dinner while you watch me doing the lesson with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is share my screen with you and in that way you will see our lesson. There's our lesson. Happy. And um, so you can either just watch here with me or you can get your own lesson. So what I want to tell you and help you to understand is where Fainwells fits into our vegetation here in South Africa. What kind of vegetation do we have? Now, South Africa is divided into many different vegetation types. And it depends on where you stay. If you stay in Gauteng, you're in the high felt. And the high felt is very much higher than we are here at the sea level. And they, are, they experience cold and nights in winter time. And they have beautiful grass felt there. And ne right next to them, if you go closer to Kruger National Park, you start to get the um, what we call the bush felt, or some people talk about the savanna. So those are all different types of vegetation that you have. But here in the Cape, our lovely Cape, we have the Fainbos, and we've heard about Fainbos. But the Fainbos is famous, we know it. Fainbos famous, famous Fainbos. Um, because of special things that's going on in the Fainbos. Now, if we look at the region um, that made the Fainbos so uh, famous, it is the Cape Floristic Kingdom. And the Cape Floristic Kingdom um, stretches over a large piece of South Africa, right here at the, the southernmost point of Africa, where we always see the Fainbos, but it stretches a little bit into the Karoo. And um, they call it the Cape Floristic Kingdom um, because it's a, a kingdom of vegetation that has amazing flowers. They, they flower big, look at our proteas. Can't get bigger than that, eh? Um, so they, they've got, a, uh, that's a group of vegetation that's got a lot of flowers. So they call it a floristic kingdom and there's only a few of them in the world. Um, and ours is here, right here in the Cape. Now Fainbos is part of that, it falls into that. It's not j just the whole thing, Fainbos. You, if you look a little bit down in our lesson, if you go downwards, you will see some other ones that we find. We find the Renosterfeld. Now, the Renosterfeld is so um, protected that, that because there's not much of them left. Farmers love Renosterfeld to farm on. It's a very good kind of farming um, land. Then we get the succulent Karoo, when we go to Karoo National Park, the beautiful succulent Karoo of um, our country. And then also the Afromontane forest that we find, they all fall into the Cape Floristic Kingdom along with Fainbos. So Fainbos is part of that family. There's some other people in that family too. Now, what the scientists all over the world and the conservationists all over the world call these um, floristic kingdoms, they've got a special name or lingo that they use and they call it hotspots, biodiversity hotspots. Now biodiversity tells you it's all the living things and the diversity of that. But a hotspot tells you, tells you it's a busy place, it's hot there, it's like cooking. Now, what does that really mean? If we look at our map down here, you will see that they've divided into different sections here. Here's our Cape Floristic region here. And they say all the colored areas on the map are hotspots. Those are biodiversity hotspots. Those are places that are firstly small. They do not cover a large amount of land. Now look at all these pieces. They're all tiny pieces. Okay compared to the rest of the world. They're not tiny if you're gonna walk there, um, but they, they, they're small places all over the world. And in those small places occur a specific kind of 
vegetation. Like here with us, we've got the Cape Lurisi Kingdom, we've got Fainbos. And in that area, biodiversity has to be very high for it to be classified as a hotspot. So if biodiversity is high, it means a lot of different kind of uh, plants. If biodiversity is low, it means not so many different. So you might have a lot of trees there, but they might all be the same trees. In Feinbos, there's a lot of plants and they're probably all different, belonging to different families and different species, but they're in a very, very small area. So if something happens, if a meteor comes and hits the southern point of South Africa and wipes out all Cape, the whole of Cape Floristic Kingdom, all of that is gone. Nowhere else on earth you will find some more plants in a nursery to fill that in. Um, so that's the same with any of these areas. They are highly protected because they are so special and because the plants only occur there. If something happens, to that small area, boom, they're all gone. So that, the conservation in those areas are extremely high. Of the highest areas um, in the air, in, on Earth is uh, the hotspots, the conservation is the highest. Intense, intense conservation. That's why we love the Cape Floristic region, eh? Hmm. Okay, let's go down and let's go look at our Feinbos, because this month is Feinbos month. Now, the first of our Feinbos family is um, the four main families that we see almost everywhere. Now, it's not the only families. There's hundreds and thousands of them. But these are four really big families. And it's four families that you will probably find anywhere in Feinbos. The first one is our Ericas. We know the Ericas. Second one is the Proteas, our Restios, that's the reed-like ones that we always see, and then we get our geophytes. Now, a geophyte, I'll explain to you when we get to them. Let's first look at the Ericas. Ericas don't only just occur in South Africa. Well, none of them actually, that you can find them anyway. But these plants you will not find if you go to the bushveld. They are in Feinbos. So ericas, let's see what we say here. Ericas are described as bushes with small leaves and clusters of delicate flowers. Now this is very, very um, important to remember because if you look at an erica, you will see that. And it's usually your first clue. There are about 860 species in the whole world of which 760 occur in the Cape Floristic region. That means on Earth, there is only 100 Erica species that don't occur here. So we win, we win. Ericas occur in Madagascar, Africa, and Europe. Interesting. Europe, they talk about the heath. They don't talk about Ericas. Ericas is our name. In Europe, they talk about heath. Did you see that Madagascar, the whole of Madagascar is a hot spot? That's incredible. I would love to go there. I think we need to go there. And then also in Africa, we find them. Interesting. We're going to look at Erica's later on this month in another lesson. And we're going to look at the leaves that they talk about that's so small. Why are the leaves so small? Why are the, the flowers so cute and but incredibly small? In comparison to the next door neighbors, which are the proteas, huge flowers, enormous. But you also get, if you think of the smallest protea in the world, the diastella, that's a tiny little thing as big as my pinky nail. So they vary from that small to huge king proteas, as big as my head. So they say, yeah, the protea family is an ancient Gond Gondwana land plant. Now Gondwana land was when the Lord was still busy um, making the earth. All the continents, were still together and they were kind of touching. And we, South Africa, the point of Africa touched was South America, Australia, Madagascar, a little bit higher up, and also New Zealand. Um, 
and uh, you know, I said Australia. So they were all, so the plants that occurred here occurred in this whole area. And when the continents broke up, they took their plants with them. So a little bit of all the plants that occurred here at the bottom of Guandana land, Gondwana land, moved apart. Okay, so we still see that. If we go look at the plants today, you'd still see plants from South Africa in each of these areas. Now let's quickly look at what they say here. And it can be found in Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and New Guinea. New Guinea is also one of the islands close by uh, New Zealand and those areas. Proteas are very woody plants, and even the leaves and the flowers are very woody. Now, if these beautiful proteas stay on the plant there and they dry out, you will see they look like a wooden flower. That's very beautiful. Not wood like knock wood, but nice and crisp, hard. If you if you feel them, if you scrunch them with your hands, but we'll look at proteas also in a separate lesson. Next door, restios. A lot of people call them reeds. They're all over, and usually they say if you if you don't see restios in a piece of fainbos, ah, then you have to think if it's really fainbos there. Okay. Restios are a type of vegetation which only occurs in the southern hem hemisphere. South America and South Africa, 350 species. That's not too much, especially if you look at ericas. Ericas are crazy. So many species in that family. But here we also see in Madagascar, Australia, and New Zealand. Ah, restios all there. Proteus, that's maybe with, they so, why they're so good with cricket, because we share all these flowers with them. Australia, New Zealand. Oh, success in cricket might be linked to pain books. It's my theory. Okay, a Madagascar, Australia, New Zealand. It's a reed like plant which is segmented. It means the, the reed, the shaft, is uh, segmented into different, you will see the little nodes where there's a little leaf on there. The reed is green and it has brown flowers. Obvious, we've seen those. Beautiful. Racio is still my favorite plant um, by far. Maybe I've got something for brown flowers. Now we let's hop over to the geophytes. Geophytes are, in fact, the, the, the family group with the most fascinating flowers. The design of the flowers is so complicated. It look well, it doesn't look like an engineer made it. We know that the best engineer ever made them. It is so well formed and designed, and it's specifically for the pollinators. Everything about that flower is to welcome the pollinators, to say, here we are, we're beautiful, smell how beautiful we smell, come pollinators. Those are the geophytes most beautiful flowers but you don't see them all year round some of them you don't ever see until after the rainy season and or just after the, the rains begin and then they pop out and that is because most of the flower most of the plant is actually below the ground in the form of a bulb it says here the cape floristic region is considered the geophyte capital of the world yeah we win again and it is, we walk over it all the time. We don't even know what we're walking over. The ground below us are full of geophytes. Yeah, my garden, every now and then something pops up. I didn't even know the plant was there. And it's been there for years. Geophytes are plants that spend much of the year underground as a bulb. Yes, that's a big thing like a potato or onion kind of thing under the ground. And they are further divided into corms, tubers, and rhizomes. Now, I like this picture here. Can you see the onion type under the ground, the bulb? Now, some of them are really funny ones. Some are of long ones um, that they also store their food in. And some are the, the bigger potato ones. And then you've got the onion type ones. And they just call them different things like corms and tubers and rhizomes. 
And later on in another lesson, I'm once again going to show you um, more different uh, pictures of the different species that we get. So these are our four families. When we walk in the felt, we will see many, many families. We won't just see these four. You will find buchu. And then you'll ask, Krista, what is a buchu? And, and that's another family again. And then you will see sweet peas. You know the ones that the carpenter bees always love because they smell so good? You'll find this, the pea family. That's what we call them. We don't call them sweet pea family. We just call them pea family. And just from our lesson last year in springtime, we saw all those spring flowers and plants. There is hundreds and thousands of different families. But the biggest four families that I want you to know that's going to form the basis of your understanding of Fangos are these four. Ericas, Proteas, Restios, and Geophytes. Let's start there. It's a good place to start. Okay, I'll see you in the next few lessons again when we're going to start. Um, let me just see, they're asking questions here. And the next few lessons again, when we're going to look at Erica separately, and then Proteas, and um, Restios, and Geophytes, and you do the lessons as you feel like. Okay, you can even do it a few times. And over the years, you have to go back to it and listen to it again, and it will help you to build up your knowledge and understanding of Feinbos. Feinbos is exciting. The more you know, the more exciting. Thanks, guys. This was fun. My first Zoom lesson. Love you. Bye.